Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I was looking through some of my videos and I've noticed I have thousands of hits on uh, some real basic beginner videos, uh, you know, talking about equipment, you know, what should be your first equipment you should buy. So uh, I thought I'd kind of expand on some of those and uh, do another one. And if you can look over here on the desk, I don't know how well you can see it. I've got three handy talkies. These are called handy talkies, or HTs. And typically, uh, when someone gets their technician's license, uh, the first thing they do is they run out and buy one of these little handheld radios. <coughs> And as I've said before, a lot of times we never see them again. Uh, or if we do see them again, they've still got this handheld radio a year or two later uh, after they got their technician's license. They basically never upgrade the equipment. Uh, or upgrade their license. And as you know, I've, I've recommended to virtually everyone that they at least upgrade to general, to a general license, because it opens up so many more facets of uh, the ham radio hobby to you. If you just stick with a technician's license, uh, let's call it what it is, you're going to be working repeaters. That's that's what you're going to do, and uh, that's what you'll do forever. Uh, yeah, you might at some point uh, spend a little money and put up a, some kind of a Yagi beam antenna for VHF, UHF, and work some simplex. Uh, there's a few people in the Dallas area that uh, basically work long distance what I call long distance, which would be 20 miles or 30 miles <clears throat> on VHF, uh, UHF simplex. But that's about it. That's uh, really all you're going to do. So uh, uh, that's why I encourage everybody to upgrade and get their general ticket. And then, you know, the spectrum, basically uh, the radio frequency spectrum opens up. Uh, to many, many, many more possibilities than simply uh, simplex uh, on two portions of the band and uh, uh, working through repeaters. So, and anyhow, I know that's what happened, so let me kind of talk about some of these. These are uh, kind of three of the most popular ones out there. This is a, the, a Wusan or Osham or however you would like to call it uh, radio. It was actually the very first HT that I ever bought. Oh gosh, now it's got to be five years old. Now it's still working. So I. You know, I'm sure in the comments somebody, somebody's going to put, Oh, I see you bought one of those cheap Chinese radios. Oh, yeah, I sure did. Uh, this was like, at the time, it was like $99 or something like that. At the time I bought it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I would still recommend that if you're going to buy an HT, that you buy one of these Chinese radios. And the reason for it is... Uh, if you continue on in the hobby, you're going to find out that they always refer to them as the toys of amateur radio, and that's what they are. They are strictly a toy, okay? Uh, they don't have much range. Uh, here's a uh, another Chinese radio. You probably rec recognize it right there. And, uh, of course, I upgraded the antenna a little bit. It's got a better antenna than what it had originally. This is a 8 watt, 8 watt version. They call it a high power or something. Uh, and it does reach out a little further than the uh, 4 or 5 watt versions over here. A little bit. 
but nothing extraordinary. It's not going to be an extraordinary improvement. So I think I paid $69 for this one. And then the third one I bought was the uh, MD380 uh, DMR HT. And I basically used this to experiment with DMR and to learn the, how to program a, ra a DMR radio. That's really all I did with it. $139 or something. Something like that. Um, anyway, I consider these three things just simply toys, you know, and I've even <laughs> thought about, well, do I really need two uh, analog ones? I could probably sell it, but, you know, you're not going to get any money for it when you sell it, so you might as well keep it, and I keep it in case one of them finally fails, and I'll give me a, another one as a backup, but, uh, I don't intend to ever buy any more HT radios. This is the end of the road right here. This is it. So Joe will not ever buy any more of these handy talkie radios because they're not versatile. They're not as versatile as a regular mobile type radio. Right, so... Uh, you know, if I could encourage people not to buy these, and as I've said many times, step out there and, and for your first radio, find yourself a low-cost mobile unit that puts out, you know, 45 or 50 watts and a nice little power supply for it. And again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on the power supply or on the radio. And go ahead and Put an outside antenna up of some kind, some kind, and buy some good coax and set it all up. Just the setup will teach you a whole lot about the hobby. Just setting it up and getting it to work. Uh, you'll learn a whole lot of uh, operational techniques just by doing that. So, again, if you just want to work two meters, uh, my recommendation is still the Kenwood 281A. I'll put a link to that in the description. And if you want a dual band, I am going to recommend the TYT 9800. Oh, yeah, it's another Chinese radio. Uh, <clears throat> our club... Uh, bought one and it's been setting at a repeater site for the last two years running 24-7 with no problems and I think uh, you can buy one of those for about $200 it's a dual band cross band repeat and if you don't know what cross band repeat you can just google dual band cross band repeat and read about it. Uh, anyway, that's my two radio recommendations for beginners. Step out there and get a Kenwood 281A. You got 65 watts at high power with that Kenwood. Or if you would prefer a dual band mobile, then step out there and buy a TYT 9800. And uh, really not interested in any comments in the bottom about Chinese radios. Uh, you know, I remember back in the 60s and basically early 70s when anything made in Japan was junk. You'll remember that. The old timers, uh, transistor radio made in Japan, you know, it was a, a piece of junk. And along about after they had been doing it for maybe 10 years or so, uh, all of a sudden, uh, anything made in Japan, electronics-wise, was spectacular. That's what I see happening here. When they first came out, back, now it's got to be maybe six years ago, uh, they didn't get many things right. 
the programming, you know, was crazy. Um, the manuals were no good. Uh, you couldn't read the manual and figure it out. Well, all that, that's all past now. They basically have as good a radio as the uh, ones you'd pay two and three times more for. So that's just my opinion. And uh, what you're looking at here is three radios that have run whenever I wanted to run them. Been carried around. This one's been dropped on the concrete three or four times. You know, I'll have it clipped into my belt and it'll fall out, hit the concrete, and it still works. There is a video on YouTube, and I don't know how to tell you to search for it, but if you stumble across it, you need to look at it. Somebody took one of these uh, Oshan radios and put it through a torture test, which included, included spraying it with a hose, running over it with a car, lighting it on fire with gasoline, and it still worked. Okay? So, <laughs> I don't know how much more rugged uh, it would need to be than that. But anyway, uh, some of those uh, early days are gone now, in my opinion, and uh, <coughs> these are pretty good radios. I know that the ARRL has run some of these bow things through some testing, and uh, some of them have failed the uh, DB uh, test for uh, interference, uh, usually on 440. Uh, the tests I've seen run, the, the two meter band was fine, and there was a few spikes. Um, I think they wanted to say, and I'm, I'm going from memory now, either 20 or 30 dB uh, on some of these radios instead of 40 or 50 or 60. So it was off a little bit, say 10 dB, 15 dB. It should have been better. But uh, I really haven't seen anyone put a whole bunch of these through a test. It's just been uh, one or two, and that was a while ago. So recently, I haven't seen anyone test these. So it would be interesting to see if they corrected that or not. But... Although you're not supposed to interfere into other bands, you have to remember this is a four or five watt radio, and you're not going to get out more than uh, two or three miles. And whether you would interfere with four or five watts, uh, interfere with somebody is uh, highly suspect whether that would actually occur, even at those dB figures. Um, don't know if it would actually cause any interference because the signal was so weak. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think all that's behind us now. That's really what I'm saying. And uh, if you're going to buy one, you might as well buy one of these because uh, when they break, you can go buy another one. In fact, you can buy seven or eight of these for what one uh, high dollar handy talkie might cost. You might be able to buy seven or eight of these uh, instead of that one of whatever it is. Uh, they're both gonna get out the same. Their reach is gonna be the same. And I really don't wanna see anybody in the comments telling me that a $400 handy talkie at five watts is uh, gonna reach further than a $60 handy talkie at 5 watts. Especially if it's got a big antenna on it. Alright? So, uh, you can make those comments if you want. Get after it, but uh, 5 watts is 5 watts. So, it uh, really doesn't make a lot of difference. So, let's uh, kind of jump over to the screen because I do want to give you a few spots where you can buy this equipment at. And uh, let me kind of switch you over to the other screen here. And we'll run through a few uh, retailers for the newbies out there that 
they may not know where to buy them. Of course, you can buy these little handy talkies on Amazon. They're being sold on Amazon, but I didn't want to give Amazon as one of the sites. I would rather prefer someone that specializes in the radio equipment. So, my first one here is a, a little retailer up in Paris, Texas. Richard, he's great. Uh, he has one of probably one of the most known uh, small retailing stores uh, in Texas for radio equipment. It's called Main Trading. Main Trading. I'll put all these links uh, down below the video uh, once I post it up. But Main Trading, if you Google that, you'll jump right to his site. And he basically has all kinds of equipment. You know, if you're interested in uh, bow thing or bow thing, you know, here's some kind of bow thing he's selling there. And, uh, whatever you would like, VHF, UHF transceivers, you know, he's got quite a few different ones there. Let's see if he happens to have that. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time and look for the 281A, but you can do that very easily. Anyway, the first one is uh, Main Trading. The second one would be DX Engineering. DX Engineering. Again, lots of different kinds of equipment on DX Engineering. Uh, <clears throat> pretty good company, uh, pretty fast shipping. Uh, if you get something that's bad, obviously they're going to take care of you. Next one would be a Ham Radio Outlet. There's a bunch of these stores all over the USA. We happen to have one here in the Dallas Metroplex. And uh, they're kind of known for their radio assortment. You know, so uh, Ham Radio Outlet would be one that at least go look at and look around, look at all the radios. They usually have pretty good information about every radio that they have listed on their website. And then if you're interested in used equipment, it would be QTH.com, QTH. And here it is. This is nothing but uh, individuals selling their equipment used. Uh, and, you know, if we went over here and clicked radios, VHF, UHF, it would jump. And here you go with VHF, UHF type radios. Pretty safe site, as I've said. I uh, do uh, have bought things from sellers on QTH, but my policy is to try to contact the seller buy a telephone before I send my money to get a nice warm fuzzy feel. And all of my buys on QTH have worked out just fine. In fact, the uh, uh, manual tuner I use in the ham shack, the uh, MFJ 986, was purchased used at a pretty good price off of QTH.com. So let me uh, kind of stop you right here and get you back over here. And that'll give you a little bit better feel, I hope, for my thoughts on handy talkies. Yeah, uh, you probably need to have one or two, you know, for when there's some kind of a MCOM, uh, emergency management type, drill or uh, actual emergency you got to have one of those so you can walk around with it uh, but it's really not a very good choice to actually work VHF UHF you really need to step out there and buy a mobile unit of some kind and uh, put up a little antenna it doesn't have to be you know a $200 antenna can be a little J pole or something as long as it's outside the house and say up about the height of the building you'll be in great shape 
And uh, then you can go on down the road, uh, VHF, UHF, and be in pretty good shape. And of course, the, if you rig it up properly, uh, you can pretty easily move it uh, into your vehicle and out of your vehicle. A little bit pain in the behind to do that, but uh, depending on how you rig it up with some maybe quick disconnects or things like that in the car and in the shack, you can pretty much just unplug it and uh, go in the car and t attach it to a bracket or set it on the seat or whatever you're going to do. Plug in the coax that's there and the power cable that's there that's attached to the battery. And, you know, you're mobile in your car. So, with that said, that's just an opinion on my part. Your mileage may vary. And it's a hobby. So don't beat up on me too bad. Anyway, everybody have a great day. I usually do. Clear sky at 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Y'all be good. See y'all later.